All right. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, this meeting has been advertised in accordance with the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act and is publicly accessible in accordance with law. Roll call, please. Sure, Kevin. Here. Bracco. Here. David Cittadino. Dr. George. Here. Mayor Henry. Sarah. Here. Maria. Rosemary is not here. Esty. Here. Zaina. Oh. And Frank Weber. Okay, thank you. Salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, I don't believe we have anything for executive no, session, no. so... I will go to the minutes of last month. Just We just have the regular mi uh, meeting minutes of October 11th. Um, can I have a motion? I'll make it. I'll motion. Or I second. I will second. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? No. Roll oh, call, please. Sure, Rocco? Yes. Dr. George? Yes. Sarah? Yep. Esty? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Thank you. We don't have anything under personnel. We will move to finance. Um, the bill listing in the amount of 226043 I know Maria, who usually reviews that, is not here. She did, however, reach out to me and tell me that she um, has reviewed the bill listing. All her questions were answered. She has no concerns. With that, uh, will someone make a motion? I'll make it. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion on the bill listing? No. Thank you. All right. Roll call, please. Dr. George? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Esty? Yes. Rocco? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now the 2022 audit report. Um, that was sent to all board members. Uh, prior to sending it to the full board, I did send it to the finance committee and had requested that the finance committee request it and let me know if there was any need for any uh, committee meeting discussions or anything. I didn't see anything um, you know, outstanding in the, in the audit report. I did not receive a response from the finance committee. It seems that all members of finance committee were okay with it. So I did ask the director to send it with the pack for all members to review. I hope everybody's had you a said look said Maria, so that's why I didn't respond, just so yeah. you know. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but it was fine. I read it okay. through it and it was fine. All right. So would you make a, a motion? Yes, Thank I will you. make the motion. Second to accept the audit I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Sarah? Yes. Esty? Yes. Marco? Yes. Dr. George? Dan? And Kevin? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, Kevin, can yes. we just go back to personnel for a second? Sure. Uh, just to update the whole board and the personnel committee specifically, I have heard back from the supervisory units representative uh, on negotiations. We have provided them with responses to their proposals and proposals of our own. There are only two issues outstanding. I just got that information today. So I'll be emailing it to all of the personnel committee members and we will dispose of that negotiation pretty shortly, probably with one meeting, which we will do in whatever format the negotiations committee uh, is most comfortable with. So I'll be in touch uh, tomorrow on that. Good. Thank you. There is just one other point on that. Uh, I got the response back from Irene and Linda their contracts that they had last year are fine. Uh, the only thing that is outstanding is to come up with a salary increase. Okay. So we, I would assume we would go into closed session for that or? Um, Dr. George, maybe when we have the negotiations meeting. Okay. When, during downtime of that, the committee can reach consensus and then we can bring it back for action at the December meeting. Fine. Okay, so thank you. All right, um, old business, the amended notary policy. Um, I think everyone has a copy of that. Yep. Yeah. And um, this is just, uh, Chris and I took a look at this back and forth with just making things clearer. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> just a note, we're still having um, some issues with people being frustrated 
with notary service, someone came in and wanted a signature on a document that was power of attorney. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that we do. So we will continue to work to make things clearer. And this language was an attempt just to make sure that at least the policy is clear enough and then we'll continue working to make it all clearer. Should we, do we have any anything on our website that states, um, you know, our, I'm sure the policy is out there, but, um, you know, more than just having to have somebody search for the policy, you know, maybe under library services, do we have something that says notary service? And can we maybe just throw in a few bullets of the types of things that we would notarize versus what we wouldn't? So maybe there's some clarity out there to the public. We're working on that with the whole website update. Okay. Um, where we're going to work with uh, all together as a team with staff just to get the content sorted so it's clearer, and then we can look at a full website redesign later. But it, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, even if it just says notary services and it's clickable. Yeah. Just to because <clears throat> demands for notary services are getting more and more elaborate. Yes. And we need to contain that, which is what this new language does. But it's only fair that people know that, that we can't. We're not going to, you know, sign off on an adoption of a child. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they want to come get they want to come get something for free rather than go yeah. to a lawyer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is what but they the, should be doing. And the town also has a notary, correct? Yeah, and every yeah. bank. And every bank. And yeah. There, there, are, yeah. there are other options. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, to put staff members in the position of vouching for a mortgage seems to be a lot. And that's my other issue for outside the meeting is my I questioned. I had a staff member say that they were paying for their own E and O insurance. Mm -hmm. executive and officer's insurance because notary being a notary carries a liability with it mm -hmm. um so i wanted to look into that i just remembered mm -hmm. um about if staff are required to have that is that something the library should be addressing yeah if, if they're providing it and is, i'm not sure if it's executives and officers or errors and omissions they're two e and o's sorry it's um, errors and omissions my yeah. apologies no problem but uh, if they are being required to perform those services as part of their employment with the library, then yes, insurance should be provided for them for that because they are the library for purposes of that, that little stamp routine that they're doing for somebody. Yeah. And it's if it comes back at them, it should not be on us. I mean, it, shouldn't, it should not be on them as an okay. individual. Yeah. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm looking for a motion. Rocco, I'll look your way, being that you're the, the chair, if you don't yes, mind. I will, be, yeah. I will make the motion. Thank I'll you. Se I'll second. Great, thanks. Any other discussion on the notary policy? Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Uh, did we have motions? Yes. yes. Oh, it was Rocco, Rocco and then SD second. Sorry. 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 All right, yeah, SD? Yes. Rocco? Yes. Dr. George? Yes. Tara? Yes. Kevin? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, new business, the uh, 2024 board meeting schedule. Um, that was also sent along in the pack. I reviewed it. I didn't see any, um, any concerns, any holidays or anything, conflicting dates of meetings. Yeah, I did the same thing with the Jewish yeah. holidays. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't yeah. any conflicting dates. Yeah, we did also. Yeah. Just okay. so you know, we're on okay. it. Okay, no, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. know what's yeah. looked at when they okay. do that. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, will somebody make a motion for the board meeting schedule? I will. Yeah, I will. Oh. Sarah second it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yes, there we go. On the meeting schedule. Okay, roll call, please. Rocco? Yes. Dr. George? Yes. Sarah? Yep. Christy? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Thank you. The 2024 library holiday closure schedule. Uh, also sent along in the pack. Uh, do I have a motion for that? I'll make it. Thanks. A second? I'll second it. Sarah. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Dr. George? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Steve? Yes. Raka? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Director's report. Uh, first, were there any questions about the report as it was written? Okay. There's a lot, of There's, <laughs> a, well, lot, a lot of money about to be spent. <laughs> and and this is, um, this is uh, I have even more detail for you. I'm going to try and go through it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to start hopefully a, a precedent where since we have the opportunity, people are watching and just to give you all talking points when you're out in the community. A um, couple of things. I didn't realize how great our teen book review program is. Teens are given a volunteer credit letters that are sent to the school when they're writing those. So we're giving them writing practice, all of those things. Um, 
and then seeing them up on the wall, the kids really getting in and evaluating literature. Lord of the Flies didn't fare so well, um, <laughs> but I, I think I think it's a great program, uh, that service that we're giving to our teams. Um, I have ESL invitations for all of you. The ESL program, um, the, one of their assignments at the end of a series of classes, this one is for Mr. Christopher Parton, um, is an invitation to the Senior Center on uh, December 12th at 6 p.m. Um, here, so that uh, to attend the graduation ceremony for Aww. people in that program. Aww, and you all nice. have invitations. Um, and even the mayor, everyone's welcome. Um, our ESL program is reaching capacity. Um, we, I, I'd like to keep it to about 10 classes a week because it does take up a lot of space. So what we're doing is I've reached out to the YMCA and to recreation to see if anybody has additional space available to host more classes because they really do a great job of organizing it, but there's a limit to how much we can host yeah. here. Um, programs this Saturday, 1 p.m., the uh, Lenape Lifeways Indigenous People Program. I know I'd, I'm hoping to go. November 27th is a Monday, Irish dance at 6.30. December 9th um, is the second Saturday concert, Bapa Chua, History of 50s and 60s in song. I think that would be popular here. December 14th in the evening, I am doing a program that I've done before for the um, Association of University Women, American Libraries and Intellectual Freedom, um, talking about the development history, why American libraries are different, why we have boards of trustees and all of those things. Um, I'm also continually impressed with our clubs, crafting, cartooning club, chess, story times, book clubs, um, staff are doing an excellent job of uh, meeting a high demand for activities. Um, moving on, I met with um, representatives from the Rutgers Extension and the Master Gardeners uh, to discuss what we're doing with the atrium. We've had volunteers ask to help clean it up or to plant things, but I'd really like a comprehensive overview of what we're doing uh, before we start that. First and foremost, we have a lot of trees and that spruce is about 20 feet. Atriums are not typically built for housing large trees unless we employ a gardener. So we're gonna, um, I'm gonna work with DPW to start looking at having some of those trees taken out and then looking at what we're doing. We actually don't get a lot of light in there. So that's a concern. We talked about doing a native shade garden, but we, we need to see what we really want from that space because quite honestly, it could be paved with some seats outside and people could do programs out there. So. We're gonna continue um, developing that. Um, I'm gonna be preparing a report on the early voting experience here. We had uh, a number of challenges from the management of their staff to our equipment, to their complaints about our facility, the number of bathrooms, the temperature of the bathrooms, there was a lot. So I'm not gonna get into all of those details, but I will send that to the board president and the attorney to, to take a look at the utility of, mm -hmm. of having that. Really? Yeah. Um, power washing is almost done. Windows are proving to be far more challenging. That's one of those rabbit holes that we fell down. Yeah, I saw that. All of these blinds. And I didn't even know that we have a skylight in the community room because the shades <laughs> that are um, motorized that no that don't either don't work or no one has a functional key to them um each each one of these it's good that we're getting so much cleaned up but it's extremely time consuming mm -hmm. um and it's getting the windows done that has started that so when i said um all of those renovation and facility projects will be coming up and because they take careful planning um, I'm seeing what we can do in the meantime. As an example, we need chairs. Our chairs are like staff wide, the building needs chairs. So we ordered two, we had staff try them out. So they've got some input. 
Um, so one of the things that I want to do is start with 20 chairs. I don't think everyone needs, but these are things that we can get done at about $170 a piece. So that's 3,400 for the 20 chairs. And it gives us a nice, you know, we start to clean up some of the things that we can address before having a full on um tactical approach those are like rolling office chairs yeah that's so what what i i looked at was taking all of the upholstered chairs which wear much more quickly yeah. there's a movement towards mesh an elasticized mesh mm -hmm. that's just more sanitary and more durable yeah. so we're looking at moving to those throughout and wherever we can pick up small things some of the children's furniture as you know, the vinyls ripped or we, you know, things like that. What little things can we do that aren't going to impact a full um, up, upgrade or, or renovation? Um, I know what the, the, the bathrooms, just so you know, I reached out to Public Works and with um, approaching a look at the bathrooms that actually goes through the town engineer. So that introduction has been made so that we can start talking about that because that's gonna renovation you mean in the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they're they're just we've got pipes that are so corroded, and I know things like trap primers. I don't want to know what a trap primer is, but I do. <laughs> um, and we're spending um a lot of money on those repairs. Mm -hmm. So obviously we'd want to take one bank at a time, um, just from a, a plumbing and cost standpoint so that we can have half of the building open while one's getting done and then transition that. But I'm pretty sure that's gonna be bid, but I'll have proposals for the board in the next month or two okay. with getting started on that. Um, okay. The energy provider auction. You may all be aware of this, that we have a provider constellation, EMEX. This was done last year and um, it's on December 14th. I'm going to be looking much more carefully into that. It's where we go out to another provider for the energy. Um, other little projects with the renovation, like uh, our 3D printer is pre-COVID. So it's very outdated. So we're going to be getting two um, new ones of those to go in with Makerspace. So with that, because that's quite an expense and so on, but I agree with that especially because I want this makerspace to really kind of start to evolve again and, and kind of get utilized. Mm -hmm. So is with doing that, is there a plan in place to really start to utilize this makerspace? So makerspace is starting with the sewing program. Mm -hmm. um, sewing program is what I discussed last time, yep. where instead of, we don't have a volunteer, but we do have an instructor. All of the equipment is being brought in. I met with full staff to go through. Um, I really want this to be a collaborative space for staff with craft and technology. Um, so they're all gonna be using it. So they mm -hmm. need to communicate. Um, the sewing program is going to be starting in here. We're looking at some furniture changes. Some things I'm moving out. All of that welding equipment, I don't know anyone who welds, um, but I do know that that's, I, I couldn't understand why you had a safety class before anybody using it. It was like for crafting and mm -hmm. using the 3D printer, who needs a, a class? Now I understand. Welding. Yeah, when I saw the mm -hmm. tools and the welding. So what we're moving ahead with is um, looking at moving more of our crafts in here, the sewing in here and um, the technology stuff. I'd like to see the robotics Mm -hmm. We have staff who are good with robotics and connect that with the school um, and the, the 3D printers, obviously, and actually the prices have come down. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're looking at the Cadillac of 3D printers, we could have two of them for less than $2,500. Okay. And that's really, really good ones. So um, yeah. Um, and then we're also looking at, um, you know, we've got some of our new DSS staff that can uh, are really into those technologies where they can start to get more involved. And then we have a, a larger group of people to draw from for programs. Um, before I forget one more thing with facility, I discussed with Kevin um, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which is next week, Lawrence Harbor wouldn't open until four 
and the library closes at five. So we're just not going to open Lawrence Harbor that day. It didn't seem to make sense to, to change the hours. And, and we've had that posted, right? Because that was my one concern. As long as we post well ahead of time, yep. the public is aware. Staff in Lawrence yeah. Harbor have put it up and then we'll put something on the main website okay. starting tomorrow, yeah. right? Um, our evaluations have started, just so you know that that's all underway this time of year with our goal to be done with all of our evaluations by December 31st. Um, computers, um, we're still, um, Adam's making amazing progress with getting that tower done. He's got some conference calls this week. We've priced out the equipment. Now we're pricing out the labor to get that done. And then looking to start um, I told him, as we've all discussed before, you don't need to go out and order 30 new computers. We can trial them. Mm -hmm. So he's working with HP to get circulation updated with their computers, and then also to create one staff computer that's capable of handling all of the technologies that we want to use for making our training videos and making our promotions. Um, so we're going to have one station where everyone can come in and do that. So that's going to be his first phase, mm -hmm. getting those things done and then moving forward. Um, but I do, I appreciate that staff are really committed to making sure that they do the right thing in the right way. So encouraging them to, to trial solutions works. Um, hotspots. Um, we've gone through, I believe that we've found a solution for the problem we had with hotspots running out of data. Adam, again, has done that research. Um, and I'm not gonna get into the solution, but it makes sure that we don't have the problem. Um, and we also did have, I know that Frank had asked, um, one of them, one of our hotspots had not been replaced because of warranty, one was not working. So it had actually been canceled. So we're renewing and moving ahead with that. Um, there was a problem with purchasing before because during COVID, you could only buy a certain number at a time. Hotspots, that doesn't, um, that doesn't really matter anymore. Um, okay. Um, the databases. Um, I went through, as I explained here, Newsbank, Creative Bug, New York Times, I'm going to be very careful with. Teachers have asked us for that repeatedly because it goes back historically to 1851. What New York Times is trying to sell is access to its um, website. And I don't want us driven to their website. I, you know, I don't, I don't want our patrons to have to give out their personal information and addresses. That's not what this is for. So I'm gonna be working careful, carefully with them but that's 3,640 for all of Old Bridge to have access to the full New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, Newsbank is 4,652 for the year, um, but there are 55 New Jersey newspapers, Star Ledger, USA Today, and that's with, it sounds morbid, but the obituary package is very popular with genealogists. So that will be in there. Um, mm -hmm. Creative Bug is 2,250 per year. And that is basically like a private YouTube of every craft you can imagine, gardening, cooking. And we know <clears throat> that that's really popular here in Old Bridge. Um, and then uh, newspapers.com has the Asbury Park Press back to 1887. Mm. And I'm quite certain that that's also going to be under 5,000. And all of this, we still won't even approach our online services limit for budget this year. So getting these going. And this, each of these, it does, it's, it's not only promotion, but it's also training for staff. It's also differentiating training and answering questions about them is for a reference staff. Circulation staff can be promoting them as people are checking out books. All of these, um, you know, it's not like we just buy it. So there are plans for getting everything done. Um, let's see, uh, I took a professional development day also, since we've been talking about branches, 
I went to um, Jersey City and Hoboken. Extremely interesting. Um, Jersey City alone has 10 branches mm -hmm. and they only own eight of them. So this is what I wanted to see. Where are they putting them? Because they're actually, they need more branches. They're building their, their libraries. Um, but they also aren't in a consortium like we are. Hoboken put um, a, a library, um, a little satellite library into a housing development because that's what people needed. So they've got some things they're exploring storefronts. They're, it was really nice to be able to go and see 12 branches and all the iterations of what library service means in those communities, rather than going to one where they have a branch. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be incorporating all of those uh, things. My LMXAC meeting, we should have a new catalog coming within the year. I'll be they're they're trialing three different systems right now. Um, I'm not happy with our current one, so I think there can only be improvement. Okay. Um, so unless there are any questions about the places where we're going to be um, spending anything specific about databases or anything else, any. Um... Anything to know about the staff training that's happening next month? Well, um, I sent out uh, the draft of the, um, sorry, agenda right. last month. Yeah. So I may make a change because we do have an initial proposal about renovation just to start a discussion with creative library concepts. And it would be a good time to get staff feedback as a, for instance, they really think that taking the youth services office and making that a team space is a great idea. I am extremely cautious about that because team spaces need monitoring. Don't we already have, isn't that the purpose of the diner looking area? They wanted, the, so in, when I was in Rhode Island, the same company made a teen room that can be closed off and had a little more privacy that didn't end well. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's not yeah, a good that's idea. <laughs> yep. No, that's not a good idea. That's and this cool. is where it's important because, you know, using a company like Creative Library Concepts gives us, us the, the best of national trends, mm -hmm. but those still have to be looked at critically. Yeah. And that's why I thought just getting some feedback from staff quickly mm -hmm. might be a part of that day. Mm -hmm. um, the breakfast, lunch, whatever we're doing with that, um, the Friends are moving forward. Uh, the president of the Friends was away for a few weeks, which I think we all forgot. Is that him? Is that Gary? Hi, Gary. Yes. So um, he was, I think people forgot that he was away on business. Um, so we're getting back on track now. Um, and we're setting up a meeting to go over um, all of the, the monies and the accounts and um, what correspondence has come in for them. But then I will also be asking the friends to undertake the first um, project, which would be funding for those um, refreshments during the staff training day. Okay. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, unless anybody has any questions. Anyone? Oh. Great, thank you. Okay, so then we will move on to committee reports. Um, buildings and grounds, nothing. Thing, okay. What's currently going on? So, um, finance. You no, know, Maria's not here. Um, obviously, we 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 passed the uh, the the budget last month. I think it was, or yeah. was it last month? Um, the audit report has been accepted now, so nothing new. I know uh, we got to get moving on the the twenty twenty three budget now. Um, or twenty twenty four. Twenty four rather. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, budget now, so that that will be the next steps for finance committee. Um, outreach marketing, Frank, I don't think that there's anything going on with that. Uh, personnel negotiations, um, Dr. George spoke a little bit about it. Anything else? Dr. George? It's frozen. It's frozen. Nope. Oh, no. Oh. Just very still. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll I, I wanted to yeah. add something with marketing and outreach just to let you know what's 
I, I know it's uh, trustees coming in, but I've got projects for us to work on. I wanted to bring in, um, I know that the comment cards um, have been a bit dismissed, um, but I just want you to know that they're actually really um, valuable for a number of reasons. This is a person who reads fantasy books who wants a fantasy book club. So the, there are requests, not just compliments, people wanting a hydro boost water canteen filler um, <laughs> instead of just- Oh, just the water fountain. Mm -hmm. That's a yep. good idea. It's a yeah. great idea and it's not expensive. Um, compliments about staff, which are always welcome and about um, some of our programs. But on each one of these, there's an email and a phone number and an address. We have access to constant contact. Mm -hmm. We pay for that. And I didn't realize we have about 15,000 contacts already in there that are outdated. Yeah. So when we get ready and we're, we're trying to, all of these, all this, these are people who are asking us yep. to contact them. They're actually telling me what time of day is best mm -hmm. to reach out. So when we need to have focus groups, when we can finally get our newsletter and all of those things going again, we, we, we've got a good start. Um, I, I could also yeah, Dr. George, sorry. I, I didn't hear you, Kevin. Uh, were you saying something? I'm sorry. No, I, I'm not a coughed. Oh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> the only thought I had was, can is there any way we can put comment cards on our website so you don't have to come to the library to fill out a comment card? Absolutely. That's, yes. that, more feedback is going to be a part of that um, intermediate upgrade. Please excuse me. So, oh, okay. Sorry. And then my questions are, um, I, I, website is a great idea. Um, I, do we have them available in Lawrence Harbor? And do we try to seek comments from that community? So that could help us decide what programs and, and aspects of, of the library are, are valuable there versus maybe not so valuable? Absolutely. That, okay. That's another very valid part mm -hmm. of um, collecting information there. I would be very surprised if the staff there did not have them, but I will certainly double check. Okay. And then the last thing I would say is, and I don't know if we'd get too much feedback on that, but it'd be interesting to know what section of town the people that are responding are from um, as we look to do outreach services. So um, obviously the Lawrence Harbor I just mentioned, and if somebody was in Central Branch and said, I come here for this program or something, and I would love to see it in Lawrence Harbor, or South Old Bridge, if we ever get to the point where we start talking about that, it'd be nice to know if, if we have any feedback from the community over there. And we do have addresses on here. Yeah. Okay, so great. Oh, we're, we're, okay. We're, so we're, okay, so we're that, ready that for help. that. Okay. And, and just one of the other things we did with that, um, we, I found a big stack of comment cards about our programs from 2018. And uh, so this is where I want to start to have like DSS staff or digital services people, um, when there's downtime, they could do data entry. And we've actually gotten some really good insight from that. And I'll share that with the committee when okay. it meets. Great. Okay. Um, so then uh, policy, I think we've covered. I don't think there's anything else for policy, right? Nope. And technology, I don't believe anything has been going on with technology committee. Um, I forgot to bring a question earlier. And I don't know how, like where this would fall, but um, you know, I was looking at like the balances of the, um, the South Old Bridge money and like that it's in a CD and, you know, Frank thought that there should have been so much more in it. And I'm wondering if it's like the placement of the CD that it's at Amboy Bank, like, is that something that we could potentially move to like a more fruitful interest rated place? And is that our business? Like, can we even <laughs> deal with that or? Um, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with moving the money, but I, I think uh, certainly we, we'd have to have an idea where we want to move it to, why we want to move it there. Um, well, just Amboy like Bank, to, I, mean, I guess, because it's our bank, Amboy Bank has done a lot for us, so we, we keep it there. Okay. Um, no, it was just, them, but, yeah, I mean, I use Amboy Bank personally, but for my, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't do any like real investing, but I do see, I use mm -hmm. CDs and I'll put it in one that has like 5% and Amboy Bank is like 1%. Yeah, like, do we yeah. care about that? I, it was just something that I was thinking yeah. about, 
I don't know if we care to raise that money or, you know, I mean, it's been sitting there since the eighties, like mm -hmm. whatever now, but it was just something I was thinking of. Yeah. And I don't know if that's something that would be able to be moved or we would want to move, or, I mean, we have three, $3 million, $4 million, whatever, sitting in Amboy Bank. It's not like moving 200,000 is like taking so much of their money, but um, I don't know if that's something that we would even want to look into or anything. I, I guess I, it could always be discussed and I would probably say discuss it in the finance committee yeah. and then bring a, a recommendation to the board. Okay. All right. I wasn't okay. sure if there was some like government like rule of like where it had to be or I have a anything call like pending. So Bob Keith from the, the state library, who mm -hmm. is the one who makes sure that we get our money and advises us, he had asked me to check in after we got our audit done. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be doing that. So if you'd like, okay. I can ask him that question as sure. well. Yeah. There's someone in the waiting room. They just came in like Sorry. a second. No, no, they literally, I just saw it pop up. So I don't know if they have a question or something. Um, okay, so uh, with that, I think that covers it all. Uh, I'll ask if anyone on the board has anything else that they'd like to discuss before I move to public comments. No? Okay, I will then go to public comments. If there's anyone from the public that would like to speak, raise your hand or take yourself off mute and give a shout out. No one? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then I thank everyone. Uh, this was a quick and easy meeting. All right. Sorry. We couldn't oh. get it off. Oh, okay. Trying to get to you. Wait. All right. You're off mute, but your picture's not there. Okay. Can't get that. But that's okay. You guys can hear me? Yes. Okay. It's Roberta Shipper. So um, we had talked. I don't know, like in the summer, you know, when, when the library was moving from the wreck. You're breaking up. And we had talked about in about when the library moved from the rec center over to the bank, to the Amboy Bank. Yes. Right. And there was supposed to be some kind of a grand opening or something here to kind of let the people know in town that they're here. That is a good point. Yeah, yeah, we we, yeah. we should do something. We 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 intended on doing something in September, and we were talking about expanding the hours. Yes. Um. So I know we are still so, looking at so. we are still looking at some uh, staffing concerns there, and how we want to properly staff it. And I, it, you know, that's kind of been on the focus. Um, okay. And then so yeah, we, we will do something. And you know what? We we probably should look to do it within the next month, while the mayor is still the mayor because he had a lot to do with bringing it there. Um, so I would probably encourage maybe okay something, you know, at least for now. And then uh, okay. if we expand it, we could always do something in the springtime or something. Yeah, I'd like to maybe do something in the spring. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they, I, th I think the hours over here to have to have only one afternoon is is not working because I, I when I'm over here in the afternoon, there's a couple of girls who come over to do their homework stuff, but they can't come on Tuesday and Thursday hours because it's during school. And I was just at a, a CAG meeting last night and the people there were like, who's the library open for? Because we're all working. You know, we can't get there. So it just is it's something to think about. Like, like I would like to bring I have a service dog. And I would love for her to do the read, to, you know, reading with the kids. But over here, I live around the corner. And just so but you know, we, uh, okay, we are creating a framework bridge. for that. Mm -hmm. So that that facility is not going to accommodate okay. a large group of people. So um, we have been working with Parks right. and Recreation that when we're ready for those programs, we're gonna collaborate with Parks and Recreation to use that space um, to make sure that we can accommodate a larger group um, than we could in, in the bank branch. So I do apologize for um, not being able to see the progress that we're making, but there's a lot of behind the scenes conversation that's happening to make sure that we're moving forward in an efficient way. Okay. 
All right. But even if it's not a larger group, if, even if it's not a larger group, this is really convenient for a lot of the people that live real nearby, and they definitely would take advantage of it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just that programs, we need to be concerned okay. about capacity. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you very much for your feedback. It's appreciated and uh, we hope to continue to get a lot more feedback in Lawrence Harbor particularly so we can start to really grow that out there. Thank yes. you. Anyone else from the public? Okay, with that, I thank everyone. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Good evening. Bye. Good night, everyone.